Hi everyone, I'm Tom from Heritage Blades. I'm a professional bladesmith, cutler and living historian and I'm here today at Chalk History Festival in Wiltshire and we are just over here setting up our own little Iron Age iron smelt. We have the intention that we're going to smelt some iron and we want to use this iron to forge a sword in the coming week. And we're going to do this all using traditional techniques and methods that they had in the Iron Age in Britain. Uh, we're hoping to get at least 800 grams of iron but I'm not promising anything and any extra we make well it just gives us license to have a bit more fun. It's gonna be a huge task but the forging of the sword, the smelting of the iron is still only one part of what we're wanting to show here. The reality is we want to show people that it takes a whole community to produce something like this. Smelting iron is a group effort. One person can't do it on their own and forging a sword in a blacksmith's workshop you would have whole teams of people to do it. It's not like we see on TV all too often with just one blacksmith. You would have a group of skilled people all working together trying to reach a agreed upon end. So hi, I'm Emma Harrison, um, I'm an iron smelter and today we're just trying to make uh, iron the Iron Age way, doing loom smelting. So, so far at the festival we've made the furnace, so the furnace is just here beside me. It's a big kind of chimney structure that's built of clay, sand and horse dung, so it's a lovely mixture. <laughs> we've got it preheating as well. We've put a couple of air pipes into the furnace. Um, that will be where we work the bellows and that will increase the temperature of the furnace. It should be about 1300 degrees in the kind of centre area when it's lit. Um, so it's just under the melting temperature of iron. So iron would melt at just over 1500. Yeah, 1300 is kind of the sweet spot. So it should look kind of white hot when you look down the air hole and stuff. So yeah, it's a surprising amount of work before you actually get going. This is as authentic as we can make it, so it's difficult with any of the crafts from this time period because it is prehistoric. So we're talking at least 2,000, almost 3,000 years ago for our Iron Age craft. So the thing with the furnace is you'll only ever find the base of it. So you might find a pit in the archaeology. It might have some charcoal in it. It might have some slag in it, which is the waste product from the smelting. But that's about all you'll find. And there's a fair amount of the furnace bases found, but you don't know the height of the furnace, you don't know the shape of the furnace, you don't know what the bellows were like. So it, there's a lot of gaps to fill in as well. So it's quite difficult, but that's what experimental archaeology is for in terms of just trying to replicate or reconstruct these crafts as best we can. So you just have to do it over and over until you figure out the way that matches what you find in the archaeology. Okay, so our smelt is underway uh, and what we're feeding into the furnace is we have our charcoal, which we've spent a few days grading, making sure every piece is about the size of a walnut. And we have our iron ore. Our iron ore we've broken down into sort of pea-sized amounts so that when it goes into the furnace, it actually melts, actually gets uh, heated up hot enough and extracts the iron from it. The furnace has already been running for maybe about an hour and we have just breached having the flame blasting out the top. This tells us we've reached the right temperature and that the gases have ignited and we're starting to get a reducing fire in that furnace. So now, after about an hour, it's probably another five or six to go before we're going to be cracking it open and hopefully we have our iron.
Okay, so at the moment we're kind of about halfway, well, maybe a third of the way through the smelt, I would say, actually. So we've been going, I think, for about an hour and a half, adding the ore and the charcoal to the smelt. So we're starting to build up some slag in the furnace, I would say, and exciting. We've just had some sparks in the furnace, so out the top you get little firework type sparks that usually mean that iron is forming, so that's a really good sign. Um, so we think the smelt is going well. Only a few cracks in the furnace, so <laughs> they're always fixable and that's a natural part of the process. So we're just constantly adding the ore and the charcoal in layers and that's working its way down to the hot part of the furnace and hopefully giving us that bloom. And the whole time we're pumping the bellows, <laughs> so it's quite hard work. Um, yeah, it's hot, it's really physical work, but at the same time we're all singing songs and things at the same time. So. I feel like that would have been something that would have happened in the past because it is so labour intensive and it's very rhythmical so it's nice to get that sort of community thing going on with songs and stories and just laughing even though we're all tired and hot. So we're having fun and it is hard work but it's going well. Okay, it fell. <laughs> Maybe we can get tongs now. Oh. Oh. That is the silver one. Oh, oh. oh. It is. So the second bit. That should be iron as well. That's right. Ready? Well. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sexy. Oh, oh, oh. oh nice. <laughs> it's all bracing for the hammer. Okay, so we've just finished the iron smelt and it's actually worked. Um, so it's much better than we thought. We've got a really big block of iron, but the end was a bit dramatic. So we were trying to get a bit more ore in than we hoped. Um, and then we were meant to add some more charcoal and burn down the furnace. So it's quite a low level of charcoal. But the thing is the slag was kind of rising up and blocking the air pipe. So the, the kind of furnace was essentially strangled. There was just no air going in, so it was cooling down. Um, I went in and tried to get the slag out by piercing the door of the furnace, but that just made the door collapse because it was just in pieces at that point. Um, so at that point we just decided to pull all the charcoal out. Super hot, like ridiculously hot, but um, yeah, we managed to get that all out. Pull out a block of iron after lots of hammering and trying to get it off the wall, but it was kind of a bit stuck because it was larger than we thought. So that involved kind of smashing the furnace down, so that didn't survive. Um, but we have got the iron out, it's come in three kind of biggish blocks. So yeah, then it was just taken over to the log for hammering. Right, absolutely. Yeah, we got onto the log and uh, we've worked it down a little bit, just a little bit, with uh, some wooden mallets. I was a bit worried, some, a fair few pieces were actually breaking off uh, and there was Bit of overhang I thought might snap off but actually the way it was crushing down squashing down quite nicely and actually really holding a good shape uh, I mean that's a pretty certain that's a good chunk of iron um, and three pieces yeah I think I think we've definitely got enough to make a sword if not maybe two not that we're <laughs> going to try and do that this week um, but yeah a great success considering that especially at the end we were really worried as it was getting clogged with the slag really worried that we might actually not get uh, have gotten enough iron ore in there to create a workable bloom and now potentially we might have three <laughs> yeah. blooms to work so on to tomorrow yeah.